Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Laura here and today Notes from the Nook is going to work on envelopes. We're just going to do creating envelopes and we're going to see where we go from there. So let's get started. Here are four examples of envelopes that I have finished from the smallest little bohemian number here. which came from a mini, a mini envelope maker, punch board. And then we have this little jewel that is simply scored on the scoreboard here and then cut and folded. And then we have this beautiful little yellow peach orange one which folds over to look like this and finally we have the big boy who is blue and brown and you fold him over and he looks like this and he has a tuck spot with a card let's take these pretty little things away some of them as you saw, some are glued up and some are not. Just depends on where you want to put them as to whether or not you want to do anything to the back of them. Try this. And remember that coffee dyed paper is a little more brittle than paper might be otherwise. It's thicker but you have to be gentle with it and don't get that point down in your groove or you can make a hole. Okay, now moving forward. First, I make the line down here where I think I want to fold it. And then after that's made and I know it's permanent, then I bring it up here and look to see where the next line is close to that for it to fold down. You want it to be above, not right on that line. So there's room for it to fold over. And there is, it works. So, when we fold it, now we're going to have an envelope front that is six inches across by four, a little over four and a half down. So now let's cut it. What I do is this is the top flap, and I want the top flap to angle outward. From the top of the envelope, I want it to angle outward toward the body. That's just my preference. So I'm going to go, if my center line, my fold line is right here, I'm going to go a little to the left of it to give me a little bit of an angle. And I don't always cut these well. <laughs> so I came down to the fold line here. And then I'm going to go on the other side of the fold line and cut at an angle up and into that corner. And then we're going to take that off. Okay, I need to come down a little more. I need to come down a little more. And then we're going to take that off. Okay, can you see that? Now, this envelope is going to be angled ever so slightly toward the body of the envelope. And then when that folds in, the reason I angled it up, when this side folds in and this folds down, you're not going to have excess paper in here to fold over and get in the way of your fold. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side and we're going to just angle it a little from the left toward the center 
trying to get to where we need to be. Then we're going to turn it and come in from below up to that fold line. And we're coming to this fold line, the flap main fold line. We're cutting up to the fold line when we're cutting. And these are the places where sometimes I don't cut it so great and I have to reinforce it with some washi tape, like on the, the dog envelope. Now, these pieces are pretty big, so I can save those to be um, in clusters. Let me just cut this. Okay. And now we're going to turn it over. And we're going to do the same thing on this side, but I've got to make um, a little bit different cut over here because apparently it's too wide. So, we can cut up the leg here, and we just cut straight up the fold line on this. Straight up the fold line. I'm terrible at cutting. I've already gotten off the fold line. Thankfully, it's not going to show. Isn't that great? Because, woo, I'm bad at this. I saw one lady do it, and she could do it on her trimmer. I wish I could, but I can't. So I cut up to there, and then I also come and cut in at an angle. It doesn't have to be a lot. Just a little bit of an angle, and cut in, and take that off. And then this is going to, this side is going to fold in, and if you can see, it's notched out here, and it's notched out here. And then that folds up, and you don't have any excess paper anywhere to get in the way when you're making your folds. Okay? And I'll have to do some trimming over here, but I'm not going to do that on camera. I'm not going to take up your all's time. So let's go here and cut down through here. And then come in at an angle. And this is what we end up with. If you can see it all. I hope you could see all that. And we fold those two in. And you'll apply glue here. And you'll apply glue here. And then you'll fold this up. And that will be the envelope with, the, with its flap. And as I said, I still have some trimming to do, but I'm not going to bother with that right now. You can see when you get it here, you just want to take a pencil and an outline where you need to cut so that it's flush. And then you just cut that off and you have an envelope. There you go. And scraps, scraps for clusters. pretty crazy about that. So we have this. And then I have another envelope I'm working on, which is just a regular envelope that would come in the mail. Okay, so let me try this. Okay, that's about as much as we can do. So we're trying to decide if we want to do this yellow or if we like this pink that would fold over. It would be the single line. I really like that. I don't know why, but I really like that. And I think maybe bring this green to the edge here, move piggy back a little bit, and um, maybe do a flower or something there. Okay, let's work it real quick, 
and just see where we get. Does that sound good? How are y'all doing today? Are you crafting along with me? I hope you are. All right, so we have parts of this done. I don't try to make my chenille pieces perfect. I just leave them in a rough cut of the size that I need and go forward. Here is this piece and this is him so far. I really like him. Yeah. And we're just auditioning different colors. Let's see if I got over here. Oh. This is a super light pink. And I don't really, I'm not that crazy about it because I think it looks kind of flesh colored and that it doesn't really even show up against the coffee dye that much. So we're going to say a big no to that. And look what we might have here that would match the chenille. Oh, what a mess. We could do something like this. Okay, or it could just fall off in our hands. Ugh. What do you think about that? It's kind of nice having the chenille and the Rick Rack be the same color family. I have a lighter pink, but I kind of like that brighter pink. This is a mess. This is all in a big old knot, y'all. <laughs> I'm trying to find the light pink, but oh. Okay, so here's the light pink. Do y'all like that better? It does kind of go here better, doesn't it? Huh. Well, I'll be. Maybe it's better. Let's just cut off a length of it so that I can get this big ball of mess out of my lap. <laughs> okay. Do we instead want this to go down here. Something like that. Would that be better? We might could put these bad boys going up the side. That's kind of cute. Y'all, I just put that on the other way, didn't I? And I bet you were yelling at me. I just put that on the opposite way that I first showed it. So see? Stuff happens. This stuff happens. And you have to roll with it. You absolutely have to roll with it. Now we are going to cut these off. Normally I let everything go around to the back, but these are going to be glued up so we don't want any excess thickness on there when we decide to glue that up. I think maybe like this. And you can't see it. I am so sorry. I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't seem to be able to get things in camera. Now I gotta decide do I want it to just come up like this and have quite a bit of room between them. And I apologize for not talking much everybody. I just want to be sure that I get things where they need to go and I'm new at doing the process ones. I want to make sure that the process makes sense and that okay. if 
put it down here and let you see it. So, so far, that's this one. Hi everybody, it's Laura. Welcome back. It's the next day and I am going to finish these two envelopes. As you recall, this envelope had just about everything on it. I just added three flat back pearls to it. So now we're going to turn it over and we're going to work a little bit on the back. And I've been trying to decide what I wanted to do and I thought that I would bring in the little saying that went with the picture in the book. It so I said. thought that I would just put this on the back and then we put some of this really pretty trim on the, and that would do the flap. Okay, now we've got the flap done. Let me just... So it's time to work on the back. And one of the things I thought about was bringing in another card. I thought about making a tuck spot for it. Um, excuse my reach. Just, uh, look at that. It, oh, it fits. Ah, how perfect could that be? How perfect. Of course. Could. So that's where we are right now. Let me gather some cheesecloth and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I got some cheesecloth. Love this stuff. They have different colors. It's at Hobby Lobby. It's fabulous. And I got a little bit of pink. I'm trying to figure out a little layering thing here. And I think I may put this on. And then, I know it looks like it covers it, but you really can see a lot of the pink around the edges. Fine. Get it and glued down from here around to about here. Okay, so and that'll be a tuck spot. Love it. So this one is finished and here's the back. Okay, so now that we've got Blue Boy finished, let's work on this wonderful envelope. And if you remember, so I have a couple of things worked out for this one. And this is kind of how I see it. Let me just start putting some things on here. What do you think? Figuration. I knew that I'd love to put some embroidery on there. And uh, this is how I ended up for the front. So here we are with the finished front and we're and going yeah. to turn over to the back. Again, I want to do some work on the flap. And let's see, I pre-cut this because it was kind of a tough cut. So I've got this going down through here. And then this will be the back so that you can do any kind of journaling you want to on it and then we will put this little flower right on the tip. Let's get to it. The back. I'm very pleased with them. I think they turned out really neat and as I said before I wait until the very end when I'm getting ready to put them into a book if I have not already glued them together, I wait until I'm putting them in a book to see whether or not I want to. Now this will have to go in um, in a way that you can get to the back because of course it has the tuck spot. But I may decide not to glue it and just have this with a piece of paper in here or maybe even more than one piece of paper in here for a notebook. So, these are two more of the envelopes that make up 
this fun tutorial. And I hope you all have enjoyed it. I've certainly enjoyed crafting along with you. And I hope that you'll come back and craft along with me again. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.